Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to learn how to create a sepia effect for your photos. And a sepia effect is basically where you wash out all the colors and then you apply a colored tint to it and usually it's like a brownish, tannish, orangey tint. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to pick a stock photo here. Let's pick this one here. Right click on it, I'm in the bridge by the way. Open with Photoshop. Minimize the bridge, and here it is open in Photoshop. Now, this is a stock photo from sxc.com or .hu, excuse me, not .com. And uh, that would be the stock exchange, it's a bunch of free stock photography that people have generously uploaded, and that's where I got this from. And we're going to be using this for our sepia effect, what we need to do first, or not really need to do, but what I want to do before we get started is I want to readjust the way this image looks. I want the building to appear to be more straight up and down and less tilted. So I'm going to grab my zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in on this side wall here. I just need a straight line. I'm going to select the eyedropper tool and grab the measure tool. And I'm going to click and drag it down just like that. I just have a straight line running alongside of the building and I can zoom back out. Now come up here to image and go down to rotate canvas and arbitrary. And this angle is the angle it is going to take to tilt my line to being straight up and down. So I'm going to hit OK. Uh, whoops, I did that. Oh no, I did it right. And there we go. The building is straight up and down. I thought I messed something up for a second at least that wall is. Let's say we wanted the bulk of the building or the, the main line that appears to be really tilted to become straight up and down. That would be this outside line. I'll just grab the measure tool and make a line along that line just like that. The distance of the line or the length of the line really doesn't matter that much just as long as you keep it straight along the edge you would like to change. Hit arbitrary and you can see there's a much greater angle of 6.82 this time to make that go straight up and down. Hit it OK. And if I back out, you can see the building looks much more straight up and down. Next, we need to crop away all of the black, but this is a pretty big image, so we've got a pretty decent margin. So I'm just going to grab the crop tool, and I'm going to draw out my crop. And I'm going to adjust it using the handles. And then I'm either going to press the check button up here, or just hit the Enter key. And there we go. I have this image now the way I want it. The one other thing I want to do is resize and make it a little bit smaller. So come up here to image, image size. And we're going to adjust the height. We're going to make it, let's make it 700 pixels tall and the width will adjust to keep it all proportioned correctly. And here we go. We have, whoops, we do not want to do that. I tapped F there and that flips you to full screen. I want to press that button. There we go. Now we've got our image in here. All right, the first thing we need to do, I'm actually going to show you two different ways of creating a sepia tone. And the first way is going to be a duo tone. We're going to use a duo tone to do that. But before I make my adjustments, because we're going to be making two different images, I'm just going to duplicate this image and we'll just leave it train station copy. Okay, we're going to play with train station copy here. Let's do one thing first. Come up here to Image, go Image Adjustments, and come down here to Channel Mixer. Because the first thing we're going to do with our image is convert it to a black and white. And if you watch the video on how to create black and whites, the Channel Mixer is really the ideal way to go. First thing we need to do, check Monochrome. And I'm going to make a few quick adjustments. Let's try 20, uh, 20, and 60 in the blue. Basically, all of your numbers here ought to equal 100 by the time you finish. I'm going to add a little bit more green. Let's up that to 30, and we'll reduce red to 10. And that looks pretty good. We'll hit OK. Now, in order to create a duotone image, we have to first convert the image to grayscale. It's going to ask me, do you want to discard the color information? I'll say OK. Yes, I do. Then we're going to come back up here to Image Mode, before we create the duotone, number one, you won't have the option to create a duotone if you don't have an 8-bit image. If your image is 16 or 32-bit, make sure you come into mode and select 8 bits per channel. And come up here and select duotone. 
And you can see what Duo Tone is going to allow you to do is add one color here. By the way, if you're getting more than one color, select the Type drop down menu and just make sure you have Duo Tone. You can also do Tri and Quad Tones or just simple Mono Tone, which would just be the black and white. We're going to select Duo Tone though, and we're going to double click the color swatch. And here we have Color Libraries. Let's come down here to the True Match Color Library and just drag down to the about the oranges section and select one of these oranges like that's pretty good let's try a different one maybe a darker one uh, maybe lighter yeah that's pretty good and we can adjust the way that the color affects the image by using this little curve here if I wanted to affect the light tones of the image more I can push that up pull this down take it off oops don't want to do that That's the dark tones of the image. The light tones of the image are down here. Like I said, the light tones were up here. And there we go. We've played with the curve a little bit to adjust the way it appears on the white because there's quite a bit of white in this photo on this building. We can hit OK. And there's one way of creating a duo tone. Obviously, you might want to pick a different color. But let's try creating a duo tone a different way. Here's the other train station photo. And we're going to do a more long-term solution, something you can go back and edit uh, more easily. And that is going to be using adjustment layers. So the first thing we're going to do is create an adjustment layer. By the way, let me just switch this to large thumbnails up here. Create an adjustment layer. That's that circle that's half black and half white down there on the bottom of your layers palette. Select Channel Mixer. And we're going to do Mono, Chrome, and I believe we did 10 for red. 30 for green and 60 for blue. Hit OK. We're going to create a, another layer and that's going to be a curves adjustment layer. We're just going to up the contrast of the image a little by making a little S curve here. I'm going to drag down on an anchor point there and then click and drag an anchor point up there. Just increases the contrast a little bit. You can shut that off, turn it on. You can see it makes a little bit of a difference. And now we're going to create one more adjustment layer and that's a solid color adjustment layer. Now for solid color we're going to come down here to the oranges and we're going to select a somewhat desaturated orange, almost tan and pretty light. Something like that. That looks pretty good. Hit OK. And now switch the blend mode of this layer to color. You can see that's pretty harsh as it is. It's pretty orange. So we can tone that down a little bit by reducing the opacity of the layer, maybe 75, maybe 65. Okay, and we're going to do a couple other things just to play around with this image. So what we're going to do is create a new layer, and we're going to add a little bit of noise to make it look like it's an older photo. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure white is my foreground color. Select the color swatch, and then select white. Hit OK. Then come up here to Edit, Fill, and we want to fill using the foreground color. Hit OK. Now I have just white covering everything. Now I'll come up here to filter and go noise, add noise. And we want to add about 50% noise. 50% noise is good. You can actually tone it down a little maybe and do 40. Now if you're getting all kinds of different colored noise, you want to make sure you select monochromatic, just black and white. And uniform noise is what we're using here. So hit OK. And then switch the blend mode to multiply. You can see only the black stays behind. Then we can reduce the opacity of this layer to something around 20. And let's give it a little more than 20. Let's try 40. That's better. You can see the graininess appearing. And then we will do one more thing to add a little bit of a vignetting effect to this image. I'm going to zoom out one so I make sure I get the entire image here. I'm going to fill this layer with black. I'm just going to select these little arrows to swap my foreground and background color. Black is now my foreground color. Go up here to Edit, Fill, Fill using the foreground color. There we go. Grab the rectangular marquee tool and just draw out a selection about that big. You're just leaving yourself about an equal margin on all sides. Don't worry if it's not exact. Come up here to select feather. Now, the feather radius in pixels really depends on both the size and resolution of your image. So for this image, I'm going to try something around 50. Let's see what that gives me. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to select delete. And if it's not quite enough, you can select delete again and again and then hit command or control D to deselect and we have a nice little vignette effect to really top it off though you should probably switch it to overlay no soft light is pretty good 
But really, I think for this photo, we're just going to reduce the opacity here of the vignette to something like 50 or 60 or somewhere in between. So there you go. Just like that, we have a nice sepia-toned image. We added the vignetting. We added the noise to make it look much older than it is. And you can see here a before and after. There's before. There's after. Much different look, much different feel of the image. And that is two quick and easy ways to create a sepia tone for any of your photographs. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I sure hope you learned something. Please go check the website out. That's www.tutvid.com, spelled T-U-T-V-I-D.com. Thank you very much for watching.